Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. I thought while I'm here and my makeup's all done I'd film another video. Um, I filmed this look and figured I'd sit and do a couple of videos while I'm all made up and know where to go. Um, it's raining outside, there seems to be a little mini storm coming over um, and I think I also have my two cats out the door. Um, I don't let the cats in here because cat hair. Uh, if you've got rag dolls, you'll understand what the cat hair from rag dolls is like. It's insanity. Um, so I try and keep it at bay in here where I'm creating things. Otherwise, most of my time would probably be spent just removing cat hair from items that I'm creating. I'd prefer not to do that. Um, anyway, I thought I'd just do a bit of a... I don't know. There's, I've seen these videos that are sort of a bit more stream of consciousness, they say, uh, where you're talking about things but I have a topic in mind and I thought I was you know considering whether I did a fully researched type of thing and thought no I'm going to just talk about it um, and that is inspiration I've mentioned in a video once before that I was thinking of doing a video dedicated to inspiration um, and I'm not sure if you guys are interested in it or not because nobody said anything about whether they'd want a video on inspiration but I figured it's one of the most important um, things potentially or arguably for creative people is feeling inspired and I thought it might be interesting to have a chat about what inspiration is um, how do you get inspiration and even do you even need inspiration arguably um, so yeah I'm here my husband's not here today uh, or he will be back later but he's out having fun with his mates and stuff like that so I've got a bit of time tonight I'm here with my wine bit of wine time um, and you guys so let's chat about inspiration. So yeah I figured I would just chat about what I think inspiration is um, and what it means to me firstly. Um, you know for me inspiration I mean it's hard to describe it I guess it's where you're just driven to create something. Something bites you you know um, it's <laughs> such a um, specific way to say it, isn't it? You get bitten by inspiration, but you know, it can happen so quickly and without warning and you know, you almost, when you're really inspired, you'll drop everything to follow that line of inspiration if you can, but just as easily you can um, lose it. It's it's like that dream state, you know, when you wake up in the morning, I don't know if you guys have this, but like often if I have a dream, if I, and it could feel so clear and um, full and, you know, full of color and detail and everything, this dream, but somehow if I don't really cl like clasp onto that idea of the dream and the story of that dream in two seconds if something else happens it's gone it's like it never happened even though it was so clear a moment ago um you know as i come to and if i have a conversation and i'm not thinking of that dream and trying to think of it while i'm conscious it just it it disappears so i feel like inspiration it's, it's similar thing. I mean, if I was going to say inspiration was anything, I would say it was um, part of the fey realm because it's like mischievous, um, elusive, uh, magical and, you know, amazing, but it can also, you know, make you devastated when it leaves. So it's, yeah, I, I think it's probably a fey. Um, and it, it comes so quickly, it's difficult to, you know, invoke inspiration sometimes, but there are ways that you can. And it's almost, I always think of inspiration too as almost a bit of a, a living entity um, in that 
it's something that needs feeding. It's something that uh, doesn't survive if you're not paying attention to it, giving it, almost giving it love, I guess. Um, but, you know, feeding it with inspirational content, you know, um, with experiences, with life. If you are doing the same thing every day and, and not experiencing anything new, inspiration seems to run away a lot of times. Um, and, you know, it is also one of those things that if you don't pay attention to inspiration when it does come, it can almost like instantly come and instantly go sometimes. It might hang around, but sometimes it it feels like if you don't follow that thread that, that really sparked you at that moment, um, you could turn around in 10 minutes and then sort of go, oh, I'm, I'm not... I'm not feeling it anymore, you know, whatever it was I was thinking of, can't, either I can't remember it or I'm just not compelled like I was in that moment, you know, maybe life comes along in the, in between this spark of inspiration that occurs and dumps a whole lot of crap on you and then you turn around in, in even an hour or two and just sort of go, Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not in that same frame of mind. Um, even if it was like the most amazing thing that sparked you, you might still not be able to re-grasp that inspiration. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everyone's going to think about inspiration in their own way. I think that's, that's the point of it. Um, but, yeah, if I was going to equate it to anything, I think I would say... It's part of the Fey realm. Now I have mentioned some techniques that I've used to, um, I guess, feed my inspiration, maintain my inspiration, or obtain it in the first place. It's one of those things that's so hard, you know, if anyone's creative and knows creative people, you know that lament that people often have that they're not inspired, they haven't been inspired for so long, they don't know if inspiration will come back. They just can't seem to find it and get started. Um, and, you know, look, I think to find inspiration, you do need to be looking for it. Um, and when I say that, what I mean is, because, I mean, obviously, if you're saying, I wish I had inspiration, then you'd think, oh, well, they must be looking for it. But sometimes you're not. And, and you have to be honest with yourself when you're thinking about this. Um, and, and I've been in this boat too. You could lament that I'm just not inspired, but I haven't actually sought it out. I've just um, exclaimed that I'm not inspired and I haven't sat down with my beads or my paints or whatever and actually tried to be inspired or I haven't looked for things that um, I want to make or whatever. I haven't, I haven't sought it out, but I, I'm not feeling inspired. So I think... You know, you have to start engaging with your medium, whatever that medium is, even if it doesn't go anywhere. You need to sit down in front of whatever it is. So, I mean, for me, it's uh, I'm a visual artist, um, but mainly at the moment, I'm a bead artist, I guess. Um, I did start in fine arts, in, you know, painting and visual arts. So whatever it is, even if it's like, say, it's writing, say, say it's singing, I don't know, whatever it is... You need to start engaging with your craft um, in some way first. You know, that's step one. You can't sort of be completely separated from it, if you, especially if you're feeling particularly lacking in inspiration. You need to at least pull out your paints if, if you're a painter, uh, pull out your beads if you're a beater, pull out your book and your pen if you're a writer, um, have at least, even if nothing happens, ha have with you at least the things you need for your trade to create. Um, but once you do that, you know, um, sometimes something will come and sometimes it won't. You know, sometimes you do start those engagements with your mediums and you just think, I have nothing. I, I just don't know where to start. Um, and starting is is the tough thing a lot of the time. Once you've started something, 
um, you know, if, if say it's a piece of writing that you're doing or it's a painting that you're doing, um, once you have an idea, things start to have a bit more flow, but getting that initial idea can be quite difficult. And I have quite a number of things that I personally do to get to the point of having an idea. Um, which, you know, you could argue is inspiration, but sometimes inspiration um, is more subtle than you expect it to be and not so bolt out of the blue. Um, you know, I've got this amazing idea. It'll just be, you know, oh, I wonder if this could be interesting. You know, it, it's a curiosity. Um, it's, you know, trying to navigate through something that could be an idea sometimes it's just as subtle as that you know um, what I tend to do for myself is a few things um, when it comes to and I'm going to talk just purely for what I do because it's um, going to be the easy, easiest way to give an example is to choose a medium because obviously everything is slightly different when you create things but um, for what I do with beadwork I've talked about this before where I will start a collection and I might not even have an idea of what I'm going to make in that collection but the first thing might be just to define something now that just means, you know, setting parameters because I feel like creativity happens best when there's limitations. If you're given every color in the coloring spectrum, um, you know, every crayon in the pack, you can use all of them. You've got no limitations um, and you can make whatever you like. I think there's a bit of this um, overload of, of choice and you're not feeling as creative because you know you're just stuck wondering well if I can do anything what what do I do whereas if you're saying to someone like you can only use three colors um, you have to draw something within an A4 piece of paper um, what do you do you know what's something amazing like or how can you create um, an amazing tree without using the color green I don't know um, you set yourself limitations whatever it is maybe it's and for me I usually use a theme so you know I've um, had themes like rust and ruin and that was you know old rusted worn things that sort of thing um, you know I have different concepts and then within that concept, I have a color scheme, which I limit myself to a certain amount of colors that fit in that topic because limitations and the key here is limitations. It's not what colors you pick and how many and whatever, um, but it's having limitations on yourself actually sparks creativity because then suddenly you have to think outside your comfort zone you have to think outside the box outside of I can do anything I want suddenly you can't and so then what do you do you know um, if you have to create something with only things you find in nature what do you do you know that sort of thing really makes you start to think differently and thinking differently can create inspiration um, so that's one thing that I do uh, I also will sit with some ideas for a while so you know before I even start creating something often if it's a collection if it's a big piece or whatever before I start actually making the thing I start looking for inspiration for the thing so I will look for pictures colors um, materials everything you know because I make beadwork and like sort of art jewelry pieces I will um, look for I might look for different beads but I might also look for different materials because I'll use I use very mixed medium stuff in my work um, I'll look into different things that I haven't used before maybe that might be something that really sparks me um, and then I'll start looking for imagery 
around whatever the topic or whatever is that I think fits within it or that I think oh that's interesting and then I start to create a bit of a collage of these ideas in an actual art book um, and I think you know surrounding yourself with things that you find inspiring is so important and that's pretty much what I'm doing in that process but it's specific things that I'm inspired by within a set you know limited body of work that I'm going to create so getting different things like that really um, absorbing yourself into imagery even before you've tried to create anything that can help a lot to really start making you um, be inspired. The other thing too is the space that you work in. Um, your studio, maybe it's just a table, maybe it's just a desk or a tray that you sit on your lap. Um, whatever it is, making sure that around you is a space that you're either at least comfortable in but at best inspired by. Um, if you have the luxury, and I know not everyone has this luxury, but um, even if it's a spot in your home, I mean decorating it in a way that you find inspiring, um, colours that you like or imagery that you like or a poster on the wall or whatever, or if you're lucky enough and have a studio space like myself, to fill it with things that you find inspiring so when you come in you are just like I love being in here it doesn't have to be a sort of I see this and want to create things instantly because sometimes I come in here and I'm like oh what do I do now but I, I always feel great in this space and that's really important for inspiration the other thing I find that's really good for inspiration is um, actually just going out and living life so if you're feeling uh, really uninspired, often it helps just to put it all aside. Don't even think about whatever it is you're creating, but just go out and do some things that you think are freaking cool. You know, go out and enjoy yourself and, you know, go to some events or, you know, go for a walk somewhere beautiful, eat somewhere nice. But do it. Do something different, you know. Don't follow your same pattern. Um, so many of us, and I'm so guilty of this, of being a real creature of habit and, you know, a routine and sticking to that routine. And it's pretty hard to wedge me out of my routine sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes that's the, the best thing for me. I really need to do that. You know, it could be as simple as putting on a movie you haven't seen before or maybe one that you haven't seen for a while that you love um, but it's just experiences you know um, and those experiences can I mean they're just good for the soul anyway but I think you know looking after yourself and also having new experiences to draw from for inspiration it does so much for you creatively so um, and I mean, that's the other thing too, looking after yourself, that's so key. There's this real outdated and I think wrong um, view that to be creative or be inspired, you have to be suffering. Um, it's, it, it's something that a lot of people know, know about, you know, if you're a creative person, you always hear about the starving artist or the tortured artist or whatever it is it's never it's never the happy-go-lucky artist is it it's never the fancy free having a wonderful time artist um, but honestly it really should be because I think if you feel good you do want to create you know if you're feeling abundant um, and what I mean by that is just you know content enough you know you you feel um, okay and not everything is going to be okay in your world just remember that and that's true for everyone um, but in as many ways as you can look after yourself you know sleep well sleep in a routine eat good food exercise daily um, 
look after your mind. Your mind is so important and so often neglected. Um, you know, listen to good audio books. That's what I do because I can do that while I walk or, you know, go and see a counselor if you need to. But, you know, I think, I mean, and those things are sort of fundamental to just living a good life anyway. But um, I just think looking after yourself is first and things follow from that. I think for a good life, you need to be always assessing what you need and making sure that you're looking after yourself in all the ways and making sure that you really are looking after yourself. You know, we can sometimes think, oh, if I treat myself, that's looking after myself. You know, if I eat a block of chocolate because I'm treating myself or what have you, then I'm looking after myself. Or if I'm not um, being active because I'm feeling lazy and I just want to sit and watch TV, then I'm looking after myself. Um, and those things can be great in moderation, but uh, make sure that you are making healthy choices, that that's not your everyday and, you know, that you are actually looking after your body and your mind and that sort of thing. Because I think it's just, it really does help to to be a whole person when you create. And then maybe the things that artists create will be more inspiring as well because the, the person themselves is coming from a place, a good place of inspiration and can then pass that on. Because I think inspiration is permeable, you know. I think when someone is so inspired by something or what have you, they inspire others, you know. So it's this real osmosis of inspiration that can happen. And that can only happen, I think, if you're um, looking after yourself. Um, and for me too, when I have a thought of sort of an idea that I might want to start investigating, I will look across different genres for inspiration. You know, it might be, I might be making a necklace, but then I'll get inspiration from a movie, from a book, from a an artwork from a piece of clothing um, all sorts of things that are maybe in some way related to that genre or color scheme or whatever they're not going to directly you know inform my design but they will maybe have an impact on what I want to do and what I'm inspired by um, the other thing too is uh, I've mentioned, you know, using new techniques and things, and I think it really is important to every so often, especially when you get into a little bit of a slump, is to try and learn a new technique. All right, my camera just cut me off again. Um, so I was saying that, you know, it's important to learn a new technique and it doesn't have to be some big, massive new um, medium that you're using that's totally absorbing and will take a really long time to master or whatever it could be a very simple thing that you learn that's just a different way of working um, sometimes for me I'll just maybe get a tutorial and try that out and it might be very similar to what I've made before but there might be just a different way of combining colors or techniques or something that that is just a little different and starts making me think in a different direction. Um, it could be a different type of material that you haven't used before, you know, a different type of bead for myself, um, or a different type of um, paint or, you know, different tools, whatever it is, it might be a different program if you know depending on what you do that's creative so many things it could be just something a little different so in the same realm but but slightly different has a slightly different um, thing that it can add and you know then suddenly you can bring that into your work or you might just start thinking in the background of how you can bring that in to what you do um, I think it's so important to be learning and growing and that will really help when you're trying to be, um, trying to maintain inspiration in things. I think as well it does help to be around people that um, are 
creative as well. And, you know, it doesn't have to be that often. I only have a few friends that are super creative in um, more regularly. And we'll catch up every few months or so. And that can really start to... Again, I mentioned it like inspiration permeating each other. Um, you know, we might not even create anything while we're together. But that meetup starts to spark different things because you're talking about things and they're batting off you with ideas and you know together you're thinking of different um, options that you can navigate through so you know if you have the opportunity to meet with some people that are creative it, it is a great thing it's so nice even just to share even if you don't get inspiration directly from it um, I think it it's Good for the soul anyway just to share creativity because creativity needs to be shared now before this video gets too long I might move on to just chatting about um, do you even need to have inspiration um, now there's different schools of thought on this and I think the thing too is that um, a lot of people expect inspiration to virtually be a completely solid formed idea in your mind of what you want to make or um, you know some very close to the the finished article of what you're inspired to to do and if it's anything less than that then you know not feeling they're feeling like they're not inspired to make something you know um, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, I think sometimes inspiration is quite subtle and and it can just be a bit of an exploration. It could just be a a almost a wonderment of, you know, you know, oh, I wonder if this could work or I wonder if this is a thing that's worth creating or um, what have you. It's that little trail of magic, you know, it's the, the fae leaving a little wisp you know, willow wisp for you to just follow and go, oh, I wonder if that's something. Um, and sometimes you don't follow it because it's subtle and you don't see it or you think maybe it is nothing. Um, but sometimes you do follow it and, it, and you know, so it's funny sometimes when people ask me, oh, what inspired you to make X, Y, Z? And if I was honest, sometimes that answer would be so subtle and so um, simple as oh, I just wondered what these two colors would look like together but obviously the end piece might be some massive elaborate um, thing that's you know so far from just two colors um, as an idea um, so you know when you tie it back to where that little thread came from you think, oh, how did that evolve out of that little idea? But that that's often what happens, you know. You just sort of, um, I love using the phrase, I always say following the white stag into the woods because, you know, we had the white stag in the woods and, you know, they, they really are like the king of the fae. Um, so, but, you know, it's that, that little inkling of something sometimes that's um, you wouldn't necessarily say oh I'm inspired to make a thing you know you're just like oh I wonder if you know if I do this thing if it could be something that's like majority of the time that is the type of inspiration I have it's not this big oh I've, I've had a vision and this is what it will be and it'll be amazing um, to get a vision like that, usually it starts with a little spark of, oh, I'd like to make something with this bead. And if you, you know, so if you trace it back to its very inklings of its initial germination of, a, of an idea, it's like, I'm going to make this thing with this bead. And then that grows into uh, this design and then it becomes some big amazing thing or whatever. Um, you know, when I got the auger pendant, I didn't sort of look at that and go, oh, yes, this is what I'll make. Um, but when I sat down and followed that process I mentioned with all the pictures and started drawing it, um, it started to come together. And as I started creating it, that started to come together. And, you know, um, 
So, you know, I guess firstly, inspiration can be quite subtle. Um, and some people argue that you don't necessarily need inspiration. And that sounds really strange to say, but I guess I mean... Um, if you're a working artist, for example, you don't have the luxury of like, oh, I need to be inspired. You have to make to make a living. If you're like, and and that is it is like, I think inspiration is a luxury. Um, I think it's a nice to have, but not a necessary thing. Um, depending on the type of creation you're doing, if you are doing it for yourself for fun. You, or you want to just make things every so often and you want to make really good things or whatever, maybe you will only create when you um, have a pretty strong bit of inspiration compelling you to make something. You know, maybe you need that push, that drive of a real strong thread of, you know, the inspiration phase saying, make this thing and you're like, okay then. Um, whereas the more subtle, hmm, what about, you know, this? Um, you might go, well, no, I don't have time for that. Um, I need to be compelled. So, and then a working artist, and when I say working artist, like the unicorns that manage to somehow make a living out of art, which I haven't worked out how to do yet. Um, please subscribe, by the way, <laughs> so I can. Um, so those people who are uh, really just have deadlines, they need to create en masse, they need to just be pushing through regardless, they're not going to wait for inspiration to hit. If they don't have inspiration, they're just going to try and push for inspiration. So what I mean by that, again, is just like engaging with your medium. You know, even if you don't have an idea and you just can't get an idea to come, you have not even got the faintest whiff of a, you know, idea, it, that you just do something, even if it's a load of garbage. Um, and often it is if you really just are at a brick wall. If you're a writer, write something, anything, even if it ends up being like absolute crap. Um, if you're a beater, just bead something together, even if at the end of it you pull it all apart, you you force yourself through it. Because the thing that I've learned from listening and watching a lot of different artists is um, that great art comes from making a lot of crap art, basically, um, to put it eloquently. Um, you have to make a lot of crap before something amazing comes along, generally speaking. And... You know, it's not very often that someone just, everything they make is amazing. And even if you think that might be the case, there's probably, if you spoke to that person, you'd probably find out there's a lot of stuff they made that didn't go anywhere because they were just working through that lull of inspiration until a thread came along. You know, so you just need to keep working until something does come along that you've created that, you know, a lot of it might be crap and then suddenly you draw this one thing that you're like, ooh, that could be something, you know, or you bead all this stuff and you pull it all apart, but then you make one little thing that you're like, hang on a minute, that's given me an idea. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, look, and uh, most of us aren't going to make a living out of being creative because people aren't willing to pay what it takes to employ someone to be creative usually and that's because now we have manufacturing and that sort of thing and we have people sadly stealing a lot of the ideas from artists who have come up with it and manufacturing that and I implore you please please try not to put your money towards that um, I will mention Wish is terrible for that. There are other places too, which uh, I won't go into, but um, Wish, I have them come up all the time with pictures they've taken straight from Etsy, from sellers that I've bought from before, stealing their idea and selling it for peanuts because they're manufacturing it, but they didn't come up with it. Um, an artist did, and they're making money off it 
um, they're stealing from these artists who are already struggling and probably hoping and wishing that somehow they could make a living. And if you are funding the people that are stealing from the artists, then, you know, you're removing artists from the world because they're going to stop creating. So really, like, if, if you get nothing else from this video, I implore you, please support the artists who are creating in those little times of inspiration or pushing through the times of no inspiration. Um, but they are seeking those ideas and that creativity themselves. They're not stealing it. And look, every, like, I, there was one saying, and I can't remember what book this came from. I think it was a book where it said, you know, with art, everything's a remix. And that's true. And that's fine. But put your own stamp on it, your own twist on it. Don't just steal. Like, it's different when you're just stealing an exact photo from a website and saying, yeah, I make this, but you don't make that. You've stolen that photo from an artist. And then you're going to make a crappy quality copy of that and sell it to people and steal from the artist who's making the legitimate good quality copy um, and came up with the idea in the first place so yeah that really irks me but um, anyway I'll leave it there because I feel like this video is probably a million years long um, I hope you've enjoyed it though I hope I've said something that might help you um, with your own inspiration journey and I don't know it's such an individual thing so um, you might get something from this you might not you might feel like your idea of inspiration is entirely different from mine or your way of working through inspiration is entirely different from mine um, because that's just the nature of it you know but I thought it might be helpful to some people to hear my perspective and what I do um, in a bit more detail. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see more from me. Um, and otherwise, I'll see the rest of you next time. Bye, guys.